Welcome to another video. Let's do one more. Now, if you attempted this problem and got the answer before watching this video, please leave it in the comment section because that would make me really happy. Especially if you couldn't do it before you started watching my series of videos, that would be a big plus. Okay, um, I need to hear from you. Now, this is the ceiling of a floor plus five times the floor of a ceiling plus two times the number equals 37.3. Now remember that when a number is already an integer, it is its own floor. The floor of two is two. The ceiling of two is two. So if you look at this very first part, we're saying we have a number that has a fractional part, but the floor of that number is an integer. Therefore, it stays the same even when you try to find the ceiling. So this is, you can see, the ceiling of a floor is the floor. The floor wouldn't change. Here, it is the floor of the ceiling. The ceiling wouldn't change. It stays the same. The ceiling is its own floor because it's an integer. Okay, so we can go back to the original definition of what a ceiling and a floor um, are relative to the actual number. And that's what we're going to use to solve this. And just so you know, there is only one answer to this problem. Let's get into the video. So let's start by writing the original relationship between the floor and the ceiling and the number. We always know that if k is the floor of x, then k is less than or equal to x, and x is less than the integer after k, which is k plus 1. And just so you know, the integer after the floor is the ceiling. So we can easily call this the ceiling. And we have called this the floor. And this is all we need. Okay, so let's put this in a box. We know that k is less than or equal to x, and it's less than k plus 1. We put this in a box. We save it for the future. So now, what really do we need? Let's go back to the original equation. We know that this, the ceiling of a floor, is the floor, so that's k. We go here, we have plus 5 times the floor of the ceiling is the ceiling. So what's the ceiling? It is k plus 1. Then we have plus 2x, 37.3. All you have to do is distribute. Our mission now is to write x in terms of k. That's the, the next move you make every time. So here, if we distribute this, this is 5k. Add it to this, that's 6k. So we have 6k. And then 5 times 1 is plus 5, plus 2x, equal to 37.3. Now, if we keep 2x here and move everything over, we're going to end up with 2x. Or equal to you subtract 5 from here it's going to be 32.3 minus 6k so that tells you that x will equal to um, 32.3 minus 6k divided by 2. This again is another formula that we're going to use. So now we've gotten two essential ingredients all we have to do now is go back to this original definition and say we know that x can be written in terms of k, which is this. So I'm going to go back to this inequality and write this afresh. So let's write it. We're going to say that k is less than or equal to, I'm not going to write x anymore, I'm going to write this. This is 32.3 minus 6k divided by 2 is strictly less than k plus 1. So with this, we can have two different inequalities that we're going to solve 
and find what k could possibly be. So let's start. Now, I can multiply both sides by 2. Let's do that here. So we can go here and say 2k is less than or equal to 32.3 minus 6k and it's strictly less than 2k plus 2. So I have multiplied this by 2, multiplied this by 2, multiplied this by 2, and this is what I have. So let's take this part. Okay, so we have 2k is less than or equal to 32.3 minus 6k. If I move the 6k here, I'm going to have 8k is less than or equal to 32.3. And what does this tell me? This implies that k is less than or equal to 32.3 divided by 8. Now, if you have a calculator, you can easily tell that this number is 4 point something. It's slightly above 4. Let's keep that fact. Let's go now and deal with this other side of the inequality. Let's draw this line. So here we can also say that 32.3 minus 6k is strictly less than 2k plus 2. If we move the k's around, move this here and bring this here, we're going to end up with 30.3 is less than 8k. We tells you that 30.3 over 8 is less than k. Huh, nice. So 30.3 over 8 is less than k. And k is less than 32.3. You see, 30.3 over 8 is just is 3.9 something or something. It's just before 4. I know it's less than 4. Is it 3.9? No. Yeah, maybe 3.7. My math is not that great, but I know this is not up to 4. So we have a number not up to 4 is less than k, and k is less than a number greater than 4. And k is supposed to be an integer. k must be 4, right? Let's combine both of them so we know that 30.3 over 8 is less than k, and k is less than or equal to 32.3 over 8. So clearly, this implies that k is equal to 4. That's the only integer that is between these two numbers, 3 point something and 4 point something. The only integer between them is 4, right? We found our answer. Because we can go here and compute what x is. So here we have x is equal to 32, let's box this, 32.3 minus 6 times k, which is 4, divided by 2. 32.3 minus 24 is 8.3. 8.3 divided by 2 is 4.15. So the answer here is 4.15. And this is the only number that satisfies this equation. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.